Hi, here at uh, Oz Armor Fest 2022 again, and uh, looking at some of the static displays that uh, are here at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum. Earlier we took a look at the uh, M3 Stuart, which we were able to walk around because it um, was sitting there waiting to uh, be returned to its uh, static display position. But here we have um, two Stuarts that are on uh, static display um, uh, here at the uh, here at the museum. So we've got the M5 Stuart, which is the later iteration where a number of the manufacturing techniques were updated um, to make it uh, make production easier and to utilize more welding and cast parts um, next to um, an even earlier version of the M3 than the one we filmed earlier. So this, this one is characterized, this earlier M3 is characterized because it has a lot of um, 30 caliber machine guns mounted. Two on the uh, on, on the sponsors, one on the left, one on the right. You've got the bow gunner and you've got the coaxial one with the main 37 millimeter gun. So the concept at the start of the war when this uh, vehicle was being uh, conceived and, um, and, and put into production by the uh, by the Americans was that um, they would be fighting something similar to what was seen in World War One, where you had tanks that had to uh, um, assault uh, infantry positions in trenches, etc., and you would need a lot of machine guns to um, to uh, eliminate those um, those uh, th those obstructions once you uh, once you came to the trenches. Kind of like the original um, uh, tanks that were designed by the British for World War One. As the war progressed, that doctrine was shown to be um, shown to be flawed. And the war would be fought at longer ranges than that, and so you start to see these machine guns going away. Um, once you look at the M5 iteration of the Stuart, which is a later production version, you can see updates in the manufacturing technique. So they're welding um, a lot of the, uh, the, um, the the hull structure now rather than using uh, rivets, which are heavier, more difficult, and um, provide less strength. Um, also adding um, the ability to add sloped armour, having um, drivers and, uh, and uh, gunner radio operators um, hatches um, mounted in the top of the hull rather than using doors at the front for them to get in and out. Um, and uh, this was, of course, um, the specification change that led to the Stuart being redesignated as the uh, as the M5. Um, similarly, you've got um, uh, only uh, two 30 caliber machine guns. Um, once you get to the M5, one in the bow for the bow gunner radio operator, and one in the um, uh, coaxially mounted with a 37 millimeter main uh, main gun. So in this guise, it saw service in uh, North Africa and um, with armoured units throughout the latter part of the war in a, uh, in a scout role and in a, uh, in a light tank role. So great that here at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum you can compare um, different iterations of vehicles and see how they've progressed throughout the war. Um, so both in both cases, these vehicles were built um, using uh, Cadillac engines, car engines, which reduced the demand for the, um, for the larger engines, which needed for the heavier tanks like the, um, like the M4. So, around the museum some more and check back in later.